Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Professor Crimsy and in today's class I will teach you how to draw chibis, the most popular and adorable form your anime characters can turn into. More specifically, in the first part of this video, we will start by covering the basics of drawing chibis from choosing their proportions to drawing the specific features like the face, eyes, hair and body. And in the second part, we will put our newly acquired knowledge in execution by drawing a chibi from start to finish. So without further ado, let's begin the ritual. To kick things off, chibis are essentially very stylized and simplified, shrunk down versions of anime characters. While your options for stylizing their face and overall aesthetic may vary a lot from one artist to the next, their size and proportions are really what defines chibis the most. For instance, using a human head as a measurement, regular human characters are usually around 7 to 8 feet tall as represented here. But chibis are typically 2 to 4 heads tall at their biggest. To understand this concept better, here is an example of 2.5, 2, and 1.5 head stall chibi. As you can see, the head of our character takes up the entirety of the first head measurement. This part never changes, no matter how tall your chibi is, so what really determines the appearance of your character is its body and the amount of head stall that it will measure. Now, in order to quickly explain how I constructed the bodies, I used a symmetry tool which you can grab in the ruler menu. I then sketched the head rather quickly. It's not perfect, but we'll go over the head and face in more detail a bit later, so it doesn't matter too much here. Then I created a little tube for the neck and drew two spheres to represent the torso and the hips of the character. After that, all you need to do is connect the spheres together to form the stomach area. Note that I'm always refining the body as I draw. I never fully limit myself to the initial spheres I drew and use them rather more as guides than final shapes. The arms and legs are also essentially small tubes which end up in tiny stubby hands and feet. A good tip you should keep in mind is that the legs will usually occupy more or less half the total height of the body, while the arms will be around the same length as the upper body. It's not a super strict rule, but it can really help you in estimating the body proportions of your chibi. As for the hands and feet, you can simplify them as much as you want. Some artists will not even draw toes for the feet, and sometimes they will draw hands with only four fingers instead of five. So feel free to experiment with it. And that's it! There's really not much more to it. Now we can use this process on different sizes of chibi and it will roughly always be the same except every time you shrink your chibi a little more, you also have to simplify its anatomy a little more as well. This is what a 2 head stall chibi would look like in comparison to our previous 2.5 head stall chibi. These two sizes may be the most popular, but feel free to experiment with any size from 1.5 head stall to 4 head stall and you'll surely find a size that's more fitting for your art style. Next up, let's move on to constructing the most important part of our chibi character. First, draw a circle, then simply draw the jawline and connect it to the chin. Again here we're using symmetry just to make things faster. We draw a horizontal line in the middle of the head and slightly above that line we will draw the top arc of our eyes. At the end of the arc, draw a second arcing line for the main eyelash and then another one lower than the central line to situate the end of the top eyelid. Next, draw the eyeball, which is kind of an oval shape, then another rounded almond shape to serve as a pupil. I use the draw and erase technique a lot when it comes to creating curvy lines, meaning that I create the whole shape and then erase the extra parts I don't want to keep afterwards. You'll see me do that a lot in this tutorial. To draw the nose, simply make a diamond-shaped dot at the center of the character's face, and the mouth, in this instance, is a simple upside-down curvy V-shape. Almost like a cat's mouth in a way. Something I like to do that is also optional is to create two more arcs in the eye and fill them with black. Then simply add this little dot pattern that really helped make the eye pop in my opinion. After that, feel free to add a few more eyelashes and a line for the upper eyelid. Notice that the eyelashes decrease in size and length the closer they get to the center of the eye. And finally, you can make a few extra touches to the face, like a few lines to suggest blush, and finish with adding some highlights to the eyes in the form of a large oval shape followed by a much smaller dot of a similar shape. To draw the ears, all you need to do is draw a C-shaped like the half of a heart, but that is rounded at the bottom instead of pointy. And for the inside of the ears, you only need to draw two smaller curves following the same initial shape. Drawing hair is as easy as creating two connecting curves that point either up or down. I would advise you to start off by drawing the bangs of the character and then using the draw and erase technique again to build the hair closest to the face and outward from there. Another good tip for hair is to vary your hair look angles. So let's say you have the top hair here curving down and then pointing up a bit. The next hair lock will instead curve and point down. Of course, this comes with trial and error and varies a lot depending on the type of hair and 
the hairstyle you want to give your character, but it's a good thing to keep in mind in general. Finally, a quick little tip for drawing chibi eyebrows is to start with an oval shape and then connect two lines from the middle of the top and bottom of the oval and erase the part of the circle inside that we don't need anymore. It's as simple as that and it gives really cute eyebrows in less than 30 seconds. Alright! Now that we've learned the basics of drawing chibi bodies and faces, let's put that knowledge in execution and speedrun the entire steps of drawing a fully colored chibi from beginning to end. First, of course, we begin with a sketch. We draw a circle for the head, then quickly doodle the jawline and add in the eyes, nose and mouth. Then we make two circles for the torso and hips and connect the two together. Next, we draw the cylinders for the legs, which are approximately half the total size of the body, and the arms, which should be similar in length to the torso. Once that's done, let's move on to drawing the hair. My character Gabby has a specific hairstyle, so I simply reproduced it in a much simpler way by making the braid thicker and giving more volume to, well, everything. <laughs> oh, and also, as an extra little tip, drawing braids is really not that hard. Simply create a rectangle that tapers at the bottom, simply draw some oblique lines forming an X on both sides of the rectangle, erase the lines overlapping on one side and create the curves of your braid from there. Finally, I made a quick draft of the cape, which drives a lot of the silhouette of our character, and made an even rougher draft of the clothes. I mentioned this before, but a good tip for drawing chibi clothes is to imagine the character is some kind of doll and the clothes made for it are a miniature version of the real thing. This means the folds in the clothes are fewer, but also bolder in size and movement. Basically, important accessories and details should become bigger and bolder, and anything that's not important should probably be removed. Now that our sketch is done, it's time to move on to the line art. I'm not going to dive deep into the technicalities of line art and how to perfect it, because it would take a long time, and besides, I've already made a video full of tips and tricks on the subject, so definitely go check it out after this tutorial if that's something you would like to improve. But the gist of it is, I usually draw a clean base for the body of my character above my sketch first. And then from that point, I start inking the final version of everything that goes on top of it. So I started by inking the face using very similar techniques to what I've shown earlier. Once the face is done, we can now move to inking the clothes, starting with the body, which is where a clean base becomes very useful. What I always do is I lower its opacity and start inking the final version of the clothes on top of it, using it as sort of a guide. Next, we can start inking the cape, and when it comes to making folds, I usually make a bunch of wavy lines to simulate wind in the clot, and then I draw a line from the extremities of those waves up to the top where it gets a bit lost behind the character. I really only go with what looks right, to be honest, so I usually experiment with my folds a lot until I like the final result. Lastly, we get to inking the hair, and... Poof, it's done. Oh, and let's not forget about inking the spirit fireball. And with that said, our line art is complete. Time to get into the coloring stage of our chibi character. Now let's magically edit in those flat colors because ain't hey, nobody got time for that. And besides, if you want some really neat coloring tips in Clip Studio Paint, I would rather send you to this other video I made just last month on the topic because it covers everything we'll be breezing through in this step. So as you can see, every different material has its own flat color layer, otherwise called a color block layer. Once all base colors are blocked, I added in the color accents in a new clip layer so it's easy to tweak them if I want to, and from there we can start shading our character. So one thing people tend to do is start with the skin and the face first, then draw the clothes and finally the hair. But no matter where you start, the shading layers will always remain the same. I'll have one base layer, one shading layer on multiply, one soft shading layer also on multiply, and one highlight layer on screen. You can add more to make your chibi fancier, but that's all you need to get great cell shading results really. Another thing you can do is add some extra reflection and highlights in the eyes of your character. To do this, preserve the opacity of your eye layer, choose a soft brush, draw a big blob of color similar to your eye color, and erase some lines into it. Then simply blend everything back together using either the smooth watercolor brush or the airbrush or both, and voila! As for the spirit fireball, the way I colored it was to pick a base color, draw some white streaks into it, and create a glow effect using a duplicate of its folder that I merged, Gaussian blurred, and then put on the blending mode screen. I tweaked the colors a bit with a UN saturation correction layer, and that was it. Lastly, this part is optional, but changing your line art color is something that can really make your character more cohesive and cute. To do this, you only need to lock the opacity of your line art layers and either use edit fill or draw above your 
your line art with a bigger brush. Either way work, really. When coloring your line art, make sure you're using a color that is similar yet darker than the darkest shadows on your character for that specific block of colors, or it will probably not look very good. In the same vein of thought, avoid coloring your line art if your lines will be next to darker colors. For example, here I kept the line art of Gabby's legs black because the paler skin line would look strange next to the darker colors of the cape. And this is our final result! See, it wasn't too bad, right? I really hope this video was helpful to you in some way. It can be hard for me sometimes to deconstruct things that I'm so used to drawing over the years. So definitely let me know what you think of the video in the comments below and feel free to join our community while you're at it. I just can't believe we just reached 500 lovely souls this month. Um, I'm so thankful to you all and I can't begin to say how excited I am to see where the future will take us. But for now, that will be it for me. Time to cozy up in my crypt. Until next time, everybody. Au revoir. Oh.